Hi, my name is Chelsea Schultz, and I'm in Bethel up in New Hampshire. Um, not a whole lot about me, but uh, I play basketball, softball, floor hockey, track and field, and snow shoe. But uh, I also have one more sport this year. I actually, I use, I get used for exercising and CrossFit, but my last sport was if I'm in powerlifting and weightlifting, and that. That being said, that I got showed in for power up in to power up in you at this end for 2022 for our team in up there and it's uh, in Florida this year for 2022. So, with me luck on that, um, yeah, it, I actually made that my fourth, so I have that fourth. I compete in special up there, yeah. Um, so, uh, what I'm gonna be talking about today is about the question my friend, uh, and my, she's like the family to me. So, uh, I, Martha and I are a really good friend. So, uh, she want me to answer, uh, ask, want me to answer some questions for you guys. So, I'm gonna do that. Uh, first question is, what do I like about Festival Lopez? Uh, it, I just keep active and, uh, get into the fourth uh, play. Cause, by the love boy, I could be in and stuff like that. I'd be able to, Play sports that I love, and also make new fun and work we connect with old fun, um, stuff like that, and uh, also keep me in shape, keep me busy, <laughs> also keep me out of my, keep myself out of trouble. <laughs> no one, I never get in trouble. Maybe I do, but what's the fun in that? But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the reason I like sports is to keep me busy, keep me occupied, and also is a great way to make fun and meet new people and making a family. And that's question number one. Alright, number two. What do you think Festival of New Hampshire can do better? I don't know about the wide, worldwide Festival of because I don't know all the details about that. I only know a Festival of New Hampshire. But a Festival of New Hampshire, I have to start it with other actually a, a, a teammate. Teammate of mine. Um, after we got that gold medal in floor hockey in a couple of years, they decided to take that away because they claimed that we're aggressive. And I don't know. I, I didn't get the whole story on that either. So uh, I just wish that uh, I all up in New Hampshire would talk to us before they take away the sport that we like to play. Uh, I mean, they took away volleyball. I think that was the first sport they took because. Who knows? They took uh, volleyball, soccer, and black football away from the Hampton. And I'm not sure why, but I want to investigate that more because I got a lot of athletes who want to play, play those kind of boys. And I think my friends like to play black football, and they're good at it. So I'm uh, pretty, pretty sure about that. Um, and they also, the last sport they took away was floor hockey. And that's one of my favorite sports. I just wish Bethel up in New Hampshire would talk to the athletes before they take our sports away and let us have a vote on it, stuff like that, uh, and stuff like that. And pretty much it is because Bethel up in uh, Olympia need to come together like uh, talk to us why they took away our sports, like soccer, volleyball, black football, and pro hockey away from us. And I wish they would talk to us about it. And, uh, or have a meaning about it or whatnot, and uh, stuff like that. Um, uh, and another thing Special Olympic can do is like get more people involved, like get more appetite out there for more volunteers, uh, get the family more involved, and uh, get the parents involved, family, anything. Um, that's another thing they can do, but um, but I'm pretty sure uh, that would be great. To get, get get it out there, I mean, to get out there like in advertise, put it in your social media, or I know they're doing that, but right now, but right now with the COVID and stuff, I think we should put COVID aside a little bit, cause I'm not sure where that's going at yet, but I'm just saying that they should uh take it out there, and say oh we would love to have people join us and help us get started and figure out what we can do in the meantime before the COVID. COVID, uh, yeah, or after COVID, but anyway, 
I stay to talk about that and uh, stuff like that. Um, I, mm, what are the dumb ways that people are being mean to me? Because I'm a typical, <laughs> a typical ass. Okay, I do have a past, but when I dig into that, that's a whole nother story. But anyway, I can tell you a little bit. I, I've been called a wicked link. I've been called uh, the R word, and people tell me I can't do it, or I'm not strong enough, or I can't even shoot the three point, or whatever. But and like the well, what happened? Um, so yeah, pretty much it. I back then, um, I even tried to play on. I'll, okay, I play on the playground basketball and stuff. Uh, you know like that and uh it's kind of hard to play the regular sport i mean what i don't know how can i date it not that old before but other sport really hard for me to get no those sports because those people i'm not saying all people are bad they're just some mean people out there we just gotta watch out for and that's why it's very hard for some of us to play as play for when you're not in that old up you can play regular sport I uh, like the example, I like the example, I play a lot of 3 and 3 or 5 and 5 for the first month, but, but that's not because most of the fun of mine are my co-worker and we just play around. Those are the people you want to hang out with, you know, um, well, uh, yeah, I have a lot of mm, stuff there to me on the weekend, I suck at it, so I get pushed around a lot, but that all changed when I got into special rugby. But it's a it's yeah, it's a whole nother story. Um, number five, how you think we can change the bad thing people say or do about typical athletes? Oh boy. Well, between TikTok, Facebook and everything I did on social media, I think a lot of people I don't think that will ever change. I mean people can change, sometimes people can be fully and stuff. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. But the only thing you can help change people, um, I'll just give you an example. Uh, I have a friend of mine who, uh, she, he, she, uh, she was, uh, not, uh, she would not have been a special Olympic in the past. And, uh, she would, went to high school with me. Um, yeah, she would not have been a special Olympic. Um, uh, I think it have a lot to do with her parents. But her parents were kind of, I don't want to have a data, hom homophobia and uh, racist to uh, special needs people like me and Anna. But after I showed quick, I told my friend in high school that she, uh, I told her what special Olympic looked like when I took her to my game and stuff. And then she, the next day she had a whole new attitude. Uh, she decided to be a volunteer and uh, in my special life before them, and she did, and that changed a lot. And I think we can talk to people that we are just the same as regular athletes. I mean, we can do whatever we want in our mind. We have disability, but we have disability, but also ability to do what we ever we want to play for and we love for stuff like that but to have people I think we need to have like audience for the people like who bully us and stuff like that um to have them watch us I mean physical watch us to play for or have them commit to like the community service or community service or uh, to uh like community service people can come and watch and help us out at the event like softball, softball, and it may change their attitude about special Olympics and stuff. But I would do that. I would just have people come to it back and help out, and maybe it'll change their attitude uh, like they did to my son in the past. And I do. Uh, we we are still connected today. Uh, she is doing special Olympics in um, Georgia. Uh, Georgia, North, either North Carolina or Georgia, I'm not really sure where she, I forgot where she lives right now, but anyway, yeah, she is one of the volunteers for down there, she's one of the basketball coach, so that inspired me a lot, because I made an impact on her, so yeah, I think we, 
just have to talk to people and get too much to see what that's all up in life. So, anyway, the next question. Should we educate adults or care more about this stuff? I would have to say both. Why? Kid, kids look up to their parents and adults. And if they do what adults do or what they say, they probably will follow them, you know. But I think it's both because, you know, get kids, I mean, kids are learning from their parents and adults and stuff. And kids, and the educate kids, just treat them nicely and get them involved. Like example, maybe they just do it at like school party or get credit for showing the special weapon for a volunteer or helper or whatnot. Maybe that'll give them an attitude change and uh and another thing, adults can learn how to treat us uh treat us right and just because they're adult and they're older than us, they should treat us with back and love caring like any other coach you would. And I would and the kid We'll look up to them, and then they probably will help us too. So I would have to take both. We have to educate both of them to order for them to listen to us and do what who we are. And that's pretty much it. So I think they both should because it only work both ways. So and and, and thank you for all the questions.